Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is the second in my themed Nightfall series. This week it's Scarlet Keep and I will be running Last Wish Weapons. Now, just a disclaimer in case anybody's in any doubt of how this is going to work. I will not be using the exotic if there is one that's paired with that activity. So I won't be using 1k voices. It will all be legendary weapons that drop from that activity. Now, there is a lot of other weapons that drop from the Dreaming City, the Pulse Rifle and so on and so forth, but I'm only using the ones that drop from the raid, hence Last Wish. So I'm doing it on the Titan, and I'm going to take this opportunity to show off this Titan build that I've been talking about. So the weapons I'm going to be using is Transfiguration, Nation of Beasts, and Apex Predator. Uh, Transfiguration I've never really used before. Uh, that will be the, the barrier weapon, but you will see I do not use it for barriers at all, hence the one-punch titan build. Uh, Nation of Beasts is still a fire hand cannon. I've seen it being used with great efficiency in Crucible over the, maybe the past three months. And Nation of Beasts was the number one rocket launcher at one point. It was so good. But maybe with the introduction of Galahorn, Last and Impression, Explosive Light, it really has fallen off. But You'll get to see that in the video. The exotic that we're pairing with this is Peregrine Griefs because obviously I'm going to be trying to one-hit champions. Peregrine Griefs does more damage if you fire your, your shoulder charge whilst you're in the air. Uh, if you have a shoulder charge, melee damage is increased in the air. We've got the shoulder charge on and we're coupling that with Bastion and an elemental will build to basically keep getting our shoulder charge back as quickly as possible. Now, Bastion is... When you put up your overshield, when you put up your, when you basically, when you have an overshield, when you put up your tower and barricade or whatever, you'll do more damage with your melee. Now, I tested this because there's an, there's an arc, uh, chargeable light melee build that basically you increase your damage when you're, ch when you've got elemental wells or chargeable light with, with, uh, a melee attack. And it's nowhere near as strong as this nowhere near as strong as this. This is ridiculous. I've been using this for about a month now. Uh, well before I'd hit the, the master cap, well before I was 1580, and I was one hitting champions in the master Vox Obscura with this build, before I was 1580. So it is an extremely good build. Like I say, I haven't used Transfiguration, never fired it. I don't I don't remember ever using it. And I was I was strongly impressed. The build I've got's not great because I've only got eleven in the magazine, which kind of Yeah, left it left me especially when there was a group of ads and I was dealing damage from range, left me needing maybe to reload or switch weapons. And for a scout rifle to only have eleven rounds in the, the magazine but like I say, that's probably the role of the scout rifle I've got because I had to pull this out of the vault. I like to keep at least one of each of the weapons that I get just in case I need it. And, you know, so my, my, my vault is not really filled with duplicates too much, but it's filled with a lot of different weapons. The Nation of Beasts, as I've said, I chose to use that because it's a good unstoppable weapon. Uh, it's the only unstoppable weapon, I think, from the last wish that, that can be used this season, but it's arc. So, this is how we're going to be dealing with barrier champions. It's that simple. If you've got a void overshield, that offensive bulwark, uh, as long as you have some overshield, you will one hit a barrier champion. Now, it's different for an unstoppable. Unstoppables take much less damage uh, before you stop them, but once you stop them and they're taking the re the, the recommended amount of damage or, the, or, or a normal amount of damage, you will still be able to one hit them. And that's going to be the way we're going to be attacking the champions as much as possible. Now, during this run, I'm not really going to be speaking too much about the tactics involved. And the reason for that is because I've already done a master and a, grand, a solo grandmaster and a solo master. So there's not really much to speak about. Uh, the tactics are the same. I'm going to be speaking more about the build, more about the weapons, and, you know, the, the idea is just to have something else, you know. And I, I, the, This series is, like I say, I stopped doing master runs for a long time because I got bored of doing the exact same content every week. So this kind of switches it up for me, and I have to say, it was a nice little challenge because the last wish weapons 
maybe bar the hand cannon because of the 20, 20, uh, 25% additional arc damage you do. Apart from that, the, the, these weren't great. You know, I, I didn't just walk through this, which is supposedly the point. So I've got, a I've got as long as I keep that overshield, that's the idea, is to find a way. We'll just put a grenade down because we want to get those elemental wells. Just draw them all in. Nice. Shoulder charge straight back. Almost got my grenade back as well. Yeah, I wanted something that was a bit more of a challenge. I had thought about doing this on Grandmaster. I'm glad I didn't because these weapons just... They would really struggle against... But, you know, the, 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 the GM... The GM adds take a lot more uh, hits to do damage to. And maybe, maybe this run took a little bit longer because I really was trying to show off the Peregrine Greaves. You know, show you guys that it's, that it's a seriously viable... Uh, option uh, and if you're I mean it's, it's a good option for a solo player but if you're playing in the fire team and you've got the support of your teammates very good so we're just going to back away here like I say we just want to put the grenade down get those elemental well but look at that there you go we got my shoulder charge very good for that now let's talk about the the apex the apex predator used, used to be one of the most sought after rocket launchers. I've already said this in, in, in the at the start, and why I think it isn't. But but so it, it also it also highlights an issue in the game. Now, when the season passes came out over the last couple of seasons, what's happened is there has been a damage modifier in it that basically forces you. Force is a strong word, but pushes you towards using. A specific weapon. And Bungie said they weren't going to do that anymore to make uh, all weapon types viable. You know, the, the, we've, we've had Breach and Clear, which made grenade launchers. That was, I think that was Anarchy's swan song, if you like. Uh, and then we had uh, Particle uh, Deconstruction, which put uh, fusion rifles, more, more importantly, it put rapid fire fusion rifles. Uh, in the limelight for a season, but also linear fusion rifles. And they said, we're not going to do that because we don't want to tie players down to needing to have one of these weapons on at all times. Well, the Apex Predator has really brought up a, like a like a, an issue in the game that it, it, it's, it's not the same, but it's similar. Heavy weapons... Heavy weapons in Destiny 2, at this moment in time, just feel wrong. You know, you might have noticed, and if you haven't, I'd be very surprised, that most of the runs I've done have used Galahorn. Simply because all the other ones feel slightly lackluster to me. Now, we all know, you've all seen, you've all heard, that the Palmyra is the weapon of choice for a lot of people. Because... Uh, auto load and holster, explosive light, you know, enhanced perks and all the rest of it. But let's be honest, it's only the weapon of choice because it works very well when you synergize it with as an Aggie's burden. So it, it, it even needs a bolster of another weapon to do what is considered to be good heavy damage. That's the problem I've got at the moment. I don't expressly enjoy running Galahorn for everything but i just feel like if i'm gonna be tied to to using hand cannons smgs you know all all, all the other types of bar champion weapons you've got to give me something you know I've, I've had comments of you know along the same lines as you know another kobe grenade throwing warlock video well if you're gonna give me an auto rifle an smg to take down teleporting at overload champions and then you're going to give me lackluster heavies what what are you supposed to do as a solo player you have to you just you know as much as some people might think it's it's cheap you have to level the playing field somehow so if i can throw grenades every 20 seconds and clear clear all the ads out that way that's exactly what i'm going to do so in, the, in this, what I'm doing here is 
normally I would have liked to just put down my 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 uh, my tower and barricade and just went after that champion, but as you guys will know, there are I can see one there just on the right. There are when you when you go for the second champion, we will now have to deal with uh, Curse Thrall. Again, I'm not sure because I tried this run a couple of times because I was rel over reliant on the weapons. Uh, and I had to I had to give up the ghost that the weapons would be able to do the job of this nightfall efficiently. I, I could have done it. I could have got it done pretty, you know, maybe first time. Probably first time, maybe second time. Had I not, had I, had I have, I suppose what I'm trying to say is I didn't, I was trying to give these weapons too much respect, you know. The hand cannon is good. It's very good in Crucible. It was that when it first came out, that was what people said about it. But they are very lackluster weapons. The rocket launcher, you know, doesn't do the same kind of damage that I would expect. Uh, it has, the one I've got has got, as, you, as you'll have seen in the, at the start, has impact casing, auto-loading holster and tracking because it doesn't come intrinsic with tracking. And it used to be a very, very, very good hand cannon. So what I'm going to do is, um, this champion I'm not really, you know, I mean even if you look at it, it, it does actually do quite decent damage. I think it, I think it lacks a damage perk, or at least the role I've got lacks a damage perk. So we're going to finish this champion, same way we did in the Master and the Grandmaster. We'll just aggro him, we've got him finishable. There is a real disparity in this strike of Unstoppable versus uh, Barrier. I mean, there's like four Unstoppables. And, 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 and those terms, when you think about it like that, Scarlet keeps one of the longer strikes. I remember when it first came out, it was like, Jesus, this, this thing goes on forever. It's got, you, it, it was like the Corrupted. You could easily have took out one of the encounters of the Corrupted and it would still still have been a very good strike. But it, it seemed like after when Shadowkeep came out, it seems to be a theme that they're like long ass strikes, like super long strikes. I mean, I feel like uh, Light Blade's quite a short strike, but it's quite intense. But Birthplace of the Veil is, is a long strike. You know, there's a lot of ads in that strike. In fact, I think the first time I'd done it, it might be the most ads I've ever killed in a strike. I think it was 550, just close to 550. I'm waiting for this. With the Galahorn, I just want to bring this up because I remember thinking it. With the G-Horn, it's tracking as a... I mean, it's not, it's not truth style aggressive tracking, but if those wizards don't start to fire at you, they will just, the minute you shoot at them, they will move. But the minute you fire, they start shooting at you, they're less likely to, uh, they're less likely to move when you shoot at them. And with, with, uh, with this rocket launcher, with the apex, when they, when they dodge, the apex is tracking is nowhere near good enough to uh to be able to recorrect you know and even from range which the further away you fire a track and rocket launcher the more it can turn obviously so if ads do try and get out the way you can take them down quite easily the, the apex doesn't have aggressive enough tracking to uh to be able to do that so the problem we've got right now is there's a barrier there i have my 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 uh shoulder charge I've got my barrier, but there's a shrieker. So what we need to try and do is, I, I, I wanted the barrier to run away. So we want the shrieker to open. So we'll just put a rocket and then shoot. So now, once we clear the other ads, because what you've got to remember with the shoulder charge is, don't, you can't just be focused on, on the champion you're trying to kill. Because if there's ads up, they will be shooting at you taking down your overshield before you get there. There might be a couple of times if you're using this build where you'll need to... Uh, I just need to get a little bit closer. There will be times where... where uh, you uh, you go to shoulder charge and you realise you've been shot out your overshield. Just reset. Just slide away, reset. 
So this other acolyte will teleport right in front of our eyes, because it always will. We'll take down that wizard, hopefully. Now what happened there, I just wasn't paying attention. Because I was like, Jesus, where, where, did, where, did that, where did that wizard go? Because I never actually, you know, I, I, I didn't see any damage or I didn't see it come back up. I thought it, it died, it went down and died. Because wizards can do that, right? Sometimes they're like, whoop, and they just go straight down. And then if you've done damage, you get you get the thing that you've killed it. So again, I, I've already I've mentioned this. We just we've just taken out a barrier champion, and then we walked straight into another one. And in this whole area, there's like another heap of barriers. I it, what's a, another three barriers after this one? It's I think that there are far too many barriers when you think that there's two da two champion types in this area. Another thing that's worthwhile me mentioning as well, just just so that you guys are aware of it. Uh, I've been I've been wanting to like have this talk about Nightfalls and now Grandmasters in general. That will be up hopefully tomorrow, because it's something that I've been meaning to do since, geez, we're twenty twenty two now. So so maybe August twenty twenty. I started making the video, and then I thought to myself, um. Maybe I should not make the video because Shadow Keep's coming out. We'll see what Shadow Keep does, and Shadow Keep brought champions, you know. And and so, but now I'm, I feel like we're right back in the same place. So hopefully tomorrow there'll be that. that and, and and I'm hoping that's going to be the start of a new series of videos because, you know, I I never really script my videos. You know, I feel like I know enough about what I'm talking about to just be able to talk about it. This might be more scripted because there's actual points to talk about. So hopefully that will be the start of a new series where we can discuss, you know, m more in-depth uh, issues and, and, and things within the game. So hopefully you guys look out for that as well. Uh, like I said, I, I, I've already done the, the arms dealer. GM, I'm going to try and get the Fallen Saber done before reset and just have the GMs on tap almost ready to go. Now, if you remember the, the Master, the, the the last one I'd done, uh, because, the, because the, you'll see here, because the GM, you take a lot more damage. I couldn't attack that champion in the GM because of these. Now, the minute you start attacking it, the thrall just like, I mean, they just gang up on you. As weird as that sounds, but they they hide until you start doing that damage or you push forward into a position where you can do damage. So they kind of make it a little bit difficult to be able to push the champion. I mean, I'm just looking at the damage that the Apex is doing. It's, it's not half bad. Obviously, we'll do more damage with the hand cannon because that 25% additional. So on these next two plates, the difference between the first plate and this plate, and, and, and the, so the middle plate, the wizard comes out when you get to it, and then you've got to capture the full plate before the champion comes out, right? This plate, the minute you start taking it, so you get about maybe 10% into taking it, the champion will come. So I've already put my barrier up. That allows me to get up and charge my my movement you know to get up the stairs and then get the height needed because you'll see when you go for your uh when you go for your shoulder charge so what we've got here is just okay. there'll always be two of those acolytes uh i have my grenade i've got i've got my barrier i i need to get uh my shoulder charge back over the other side so it might be worthwhile throwing a grenade on these ads and letting the grenade kill Kill the ads, kill the two acolytes, and you see there. That's exactly what I've done. I've, and there we'll just make sure that she can't uh, regenerate. There we go. And I took a bit of a chance because I needed to get my shoulder charge back. And I felt like because the void, these ads are void. I felt like I wasn't... If they'd have been arc damage... If those ads had been doing arc, A, I wouldn't have pushed them like that, but B, I'd have died there. 
because that 50% additional. But because it's void, and it seems like it's only really the void snipers that are bugged. There we go. And you'd have seen when I was in the air, you actually get the notification on the right hand side of your, your screen that your peregrine greaves have, have propped. It's, I think it's called peregrine strike. So you need to make sure that peregrine strike has become visible on the left hand side. Ne nearly all your buffs like ambitious assassins came up. I've reloaded. I've got, I think, an extra round in my mag. Nothing major, but all your kind of buffs or active buffs come up where Scarlet Keep is. Where, where it's come up Scarlet Keep. So you need to make sure that Peregrine Strike, and after a while of using this build, you, you'll basically, you'll, you'll know. You won't have to look, because it comes up pretty quickly. You know, we don't have a charged melee, that's why it's not coming up at the moment. As soon as we get a charged melee, you'll see, you basically go in the air and get it. You get it as soon as you go in the air. So when we get here, I don't think I said this before in any of the other runs. Once you take down the champion will teleport. Got to make sure you watch out for this guy. He's the sniper. The guy up on the main part. So I'm not really wanting to attack him because he always do that. He just runs away. I'll take out these. Uh, and I think... I think I showed it off in the GM, but I think I also... I think this was the first place I actually done. can't remember if I did. Did I do this, the emote thing? You see there, we got we, we got Peregrine Strike. Now, we won't get it. We could be in the air for three weeks. We won't get it now because we do not have it. You need to have a charged melee. So I'm just looking to see if we can take these snipers down first. These uh, acolytes. And then we'll just wait for a couple of these to come all at one time. Throw the grenade. Shoulder charge acquired. Now, you'll see there, I got, I got, I got six of those elemental wills. There's, if you can kill a bunch of enemies, now you see I'm prepping myself for this champion. Can I get up uh, with my overshield? Yes, I can. Um, if you kill enemies with, with an ability, uh, we'll use grenade because grenade has uh, the thing where it, uh, it has the thing where it, you know, it does damage over time, whereas the melee doesn't. If you throw down a grenade, and maybe you get an initial kill with the grenade. If you can get a kill, one or two kills or whatever, a kill, and then a bunch of other ads, maybe a second or two, run into your grenade and you kill them, you'll get a whole new set. So you can actually, very easily, get six elemental wills from one, one grenade. Now we have... Oh, you, uh, like I said, if you're really interested in how I set myself up for this, uh, I, I kind of I am going to start doing that because I, I do realise, especially on the chest plate, if I just hover over the chest plate, it doesn't actually show you what what additional mod I'm using. So I am going to be more uh, showing you guys exactly what I'm using, so you guys can go back for yourself and see, you know, because. You know, I, I try and be as respectful as I can to anybody watching the videos. I try not to baby people and be like, no, I'm using this hand cannon, it's got this, you know, and I'm using this and I'm using that. There we go. We, as, as I say, Peregrine Strike. I mean, it's so good for champions. But I try not, I try to give you guys the respect I feel like that you deserve by, by expecting most people to know uh, why I'm using Rampage. You know, so I don't really go into detail with perks unless I'm using a specific perk that you guys might not, you know, that I think you you won't won't understand. But I think, or or I'll be wondering why is he using that? The other thing is that's why the comment section is there. Now it's something I've noticed, and I I love it. Don't get me wrong, but the comments I seem to get more often are great job great run and i love that obviously it's nice to get appreciated bye but i don't maybe i've put it down to that my explanations are that good in the videos you guys have got nothing to ask me yep this is the first time because I, I actually done this run about three days ago but because of gms and then 
I've just been absolutely shattered the last day and a half or something. Just not got the, had the willpower to do anything. Uh, if you guys ever see anything in the video and you're like, hmm, what is that? Why did he, why is he using that? Why didn't he use this? Let's get a conversation going in the comment section. You know, and I'm pretty sure most most people that, that actually comment and talk to you know talk in the comments know this. I also have a Twitter that you guys can contact me there. It's linked on the channel. You guys can follow me there. I put up stuff that I don't put up on YouTube. I don't put everything on YouTube. So I'm, I'm he's a bit close here, and my grenade hit him. So I'm gonna grab these, get Peregrine Strike. Now you see, as long as you you ha get your shoulder charge activated, as long as you have your shoulder charge, got to be careful here because we know there's another barrier. Because it's auto loading hosted, you get that little audio cue that your rocket's reloaded. There is another barrier. There are other ads. It's just got to find them. I'd like to be able to kill some of them and just get some wells back. There we go. We definitely got a kill. Oh, we got a couple of kills. So we're just going to go and grab all of these wells. It gives us a shoulder charge. I just ran around in a circle there. And there we go. And because I shoulder charged them and I've got well melee well maker. I'm really bad for saying that. Oh, I was like, welly mail maker and stuff. <laughs> I don't know why I say that, but... Uh, sometimes my brain just goes foggy and you guys have probably helped me say, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill this, this boss and it's not as a champion, you know. I'm an old man, what do you expect? One does one's best. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you, you can, if, if, and I don't have great... No, I don't, my sensitivity isn't, like, really high. I think it's on, like, six or seven or something. You can run around in a circle and get your charge, your, your, uh, charge, your shoulder charge. Now, this thing with the, this thing with the, the emote, there's another one that you can use. It's just like a sit-down emote. It's just like you, you sit back in a chair and you lean back and you, you kind of start thinging your, that your guardian starts thinging the knee, like tapping the knee. You don't have to use that exact emote. The first emote I was told about was from Lee. I gave Lee a shout out in the last video and I'll do it again in this one. It was that emote. It wasn't this one he was talking about. It was that one where you lean back in the chair and just kind of start tapping your knee. That's the one that works as well because I think somebody said and it was a ridiculous uh, on I think maybe on my Facebook group uh, which I have as well. You're more than welcome to join that. The Destiny 2, two player community. Uh, said that, you know, he loved the idea of the pay to win. And it was like, what are you on about? And I think he was meaning because that, that emote is from the season pass. I, I did take it. No, no, and I apologise if anybody doesn't agree with this, but I took it out. It was kind of a childish comment, so I took it that it might have been a child, you know, like a teenager or so that had made it, just because it's a thing now, isn't it? If, if one kind of, if they hear an opinion, you know, there are people out there like this, I'm sure you guys will understand what, what I'm saying and why I'm saying it. There are a ton of people out there that when they hear an opinion, because they don't have the, the knowledge... I'm not going to say intelligence because it's got nothing to do with that, but they don't have their own knowledge base on it. So they just acquire someone else's opinion like it's their own, you know. And someone might have an express reason why they are saying things the way they're saying it. They might have a grudge against something, you know. I'm not trying to speak out a turn about anyone else, but Sir Demetrius, who I love watching, I think he makes very funny videos, uh... Not so much with the gameplay anymore, Sir D, you, you, you know, but I do enjoy the, the entertainment of it. He had a problem with Bungie for ages, and then it came out that he wasn't invited back a couple of years. They wouldn't take any of his suggestions, and then he wasn't invited back uh, to one of the summits. And that happened for many years, so he had that was why he had his opinion about Bungie the way he had it, uh, which is his entitlement, but... Uh, what happens in today's world, it's like me taking his opinion like it's fact, whereas it's not. 
Opinion and fact are two different things. And I'm pretty sure the people that watch my videos, I think I have quite, quite a, yes, you, you that sit and watch in this video, I think you're quite an intelligent person who is mature enough and experienced enough to have your own opinion. We can talk about opinions and I can disagree with them, but it doesn't matter. It's your opinion. Doesn't need to be fact. Anyway, we've got off the subject here. It's just because I feel like I've ran through the how to do this a couple of times. You know, so I don't think you guys need to be hearing me talk about the strategy on how to beat this strike again. Now, I would like to say that the Peregrine Greaves does more damage to Hash Ladoon in this boss battle than the Rocket Launcher does. But I, I, I think, I mean, look at that. That's just a ridiculous amount of damage. One thing I will say about the run that I didn't say in any of the others, be very careful here. Now, you are going to be in a privileged position where you actually have cover, right? But these Thrall, if you're not right back in this corner, these Thrall, uh, I I have to do this a couple of times because I, I, what I've done... Right, so let, let's break this down on what's happening in front of us. I got Hash Ladoon into her... Uh, I got Hash Ladoon into her immune state, right? Now, what happens with getting into the immune state is... Uh, I got a little bit confident, overconfident maybe. Now I'm in a bubble, uh, and you know, this knight, he just like he just wants to keep coming into the bubble and hitting me. It's bad news for him because he's not going to be able to kill me or even do any damage. But with making Hash Ladoon immune in the first section... I get the knights and the wizards. So, I couldn't come out and attack the knights, right? Because there was a wizard there, and obviously it's Ark. Uh, and I couldn't come out and attack the wizards because the knights were there. So now I've, I've, I've pretty much taken care of, you know, a few of the... The reason why I never fired my rocket there was because I felt like it would share too much of the damage with with the the acolytes, and I didn't want to do that. I wanted all the damage on that wizard. And there we go. Now that wizard's come forward a bit, we can do that, and then, as you'll see, actually the hand cannon does quite a bit of damage against the wizards. Because it's because of the arc. It went slightly different. It was a little bit more... Uh, the boss fight here was a little bit trickier because the weapons I was using couldn't one-hit the champions, which it, it's not it's not a big issue. You know, it, hopefully one of them is ready to go. Uh, it's not a big issue. You don't need to one hit to make videos. But that's why it's taken a little bit longer. Just put that grenade on and break his shield, hopefully. Let the grenade do do some damage to the knight. Wizards have got their shields back up, so we're going to have to do that. There's a bit of heavy line about, but luckily they were close enough. that. Uh... So there you can see we were doing about 75,000 damage with the rocket. Which is actually admirable. Just shoulder charge because she, she's, what Hash Ladoon does, is, like like a lot of wizards. I'm just going up the back. Just to, there's heavy ammo up here. I want it. I don't have any. As long as she's not shooting at you, and even when she does, you've got your shoulder charge to get you out of trouble. Now we've got we're back to having five. Now what I'm going to do is have a look at her, because the next next wave's going to be unstoppables, right? So I'm going to have a look at her health. Right, there's another 75. And now I'm going to go up, and this could put her into her immune phase. Now I think that done about... I, I'd need to slow the video down and have a look, but I, th I think that said 180,000 on the shoulder charge. I could have been wrong. Uh... 
I never really bothered about how much damage I was doing. It wasn't something that I was checking. I just knew that it was doing a ton. Be careful with the Acolytes, because obviously they'll be throwing solar bombs. And with you being back here, that's you don't want to have to deal with it. As we've got more heavy. And now we've got Exploders. Throw that down. Charge what Unstoppable. Stop the Unstoppable. And get a rocket on. Now we'll just reload, and then we're going to stop him again. If we can, I think the other one comes first. And we'll put a rocket on him. Now, if they push to him far, it's the same as any of the ads. Just back into the corner and crouch. You're completely safe here. Nearly. But we got a curse throw there, so he's... We've got him stop finishable. If he pushes up, I will just try and finish him. So again, if you're being pushed and you're you're being uh, encroached is the right word, right? If you're being encroached by the ads, remember that the way to stop yourself from taking all that heat is just don't shoot at anything back away, right? And you see there, I didn't think he'd actually be able to do that much damage from there, but he did. But we're cool. Just backed away, crouched down. Now, if I just if I don't engage here, those ads will just stop shooting because they will de they will disengage. As long as I, as long as I I stop shooting. Now we've got him finishable. We've got a grenade on him, and I am just going to kill him like that. We want the next one though. We nice to finish the next one. So where's this knight? Just want to see where the old, the, the unstoppable is. So we'll finish him, and then we'll finish him. Now, as you can see, I was close there to dying, because I didn't think there was another knight up. You know. So, I had I had a bit of an issue deciding on weapons, deciding on what I was going to do this on, what I was going to do at the Last Wish, or one of the other activities. There are some that this season that I'm not going to be able to do, because if you take Deep Stone Crypt, for example, uh, they don't really support all the, you know, all the champion mods aren't supported. Now, we do have, obviously, a hand cannon, and we do have a scout rifle, which means I could do Unstoppable Barrier, but they're both in the same, you know, it's, it's an energy hand cannon, energy scout rifle. You know, I could use a machine gun for the heavy... But the primaries are a shotgun, the sniper. So may maybe if I was to run it on the warlock and just completely negate uh, overloads. But we'll see. We'll see. So now that we've got this here, what we are going to try and do, I'll put my barrier up. I'm going to go around here. And, and we're, we're not going to be getting back into cover. We are just going to use, use this. Use the weapons of light. Uh, use the bubble to protect myself and just kill her. And there we go. That is the run. That is Last Wish. Uh, Last Wish themed Nightfall. I hope you guys enjoyed this series. Uh, let me know if, if you know if you are enjoying it and you would like to see more of these. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do them anyway because it's an idea. Like I say, I've had for quite some time and I'm enjoying just taking in weapons from one activity and trying to beat the Nightfall with them. So, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take it easy, and I will see you guys in the next one.